Hello everyone. I can hardly believe that this is the, the last weekly vlog that, that I will do. Um, I started doing these, if you remember, when we went into lockdown back in 2020 and it was uh, a really good way, we felt, of being able to speak directly to you, our members, and let you know what was happening, what we were doing. For me, it felt far more personal to be able to talk to you, um, you know, through these weekly updates. And if I'm honest, I, I felt that I couldn't stop doing them when we eventually came out of lockdown and got back to a, a, a sort of new normal. So I've, I've kept doing them. I'm sure the new team that comes in next week will probably do it, do it differently. But I hope they will keep doing something through uh, this, this way of communicating because I Having spoken to many of you across the country, I, I know it's been appreciated and I can only apologise for sometimes I've had my phone propped up in the car. Indeed, right now it's propped up on my laptop. So <laughs> it's, um, it's, it's been a slightly ad hoc um, and maybe not the most professional way of doing it, but it's, it's worked as a, as a way of, of communicating. And there's so much to reflect on and, and I can't and don't have time and don't want to hold you up for um, an hour's conversation on, on here. But really encourage you to join online for our conference next week, which kicks off on, on the Tuesday and I'll do my closing speech on the Wednesday. It's going to feel pretty emotional for me, I think. You know, it's been it's been 10 years at the NFU. I've met so many incredible businesses just huge thanks to you. It's been lovely to see so many members as I've gone around the country on a bit of a, a farewell tour. And, and over the years, just huge thanks for all of your support, your advice and, and your friendship. It's, it's meant the world to me to lead the fight on your behalf. Our professional staff across the country, you know, our office out in Brussels, our headquarters here in Stoneley, our offices in London, regional, county down to branch level and our uh, relationship with the NFU Mutual and, and our group secretaries. Um, I just am incredibly proud of the NFU and, and what we've done and I, I really uh, wonder what on earth life would be like without the NFU. Quite honestly, I look at the legal cases that we've had, um, our challenges to, to government, our determination now to make sure that they do treat food security as seriously as, as energy security. I, I once again feel that the dial has continually moved in the right direction, but actions will speak much louder than words. And I'm hoping at the conference next week that we'll see all parties outlining their plan for food production. Um, I feel at the moment, if I'm honest, in the sustainable farming scheme in Wales and the sustainable farming incentive scheme, in England, that, that farming has been used effectively as the vehicle for delivering on the legislated environmental targets. You know, the, the first duty of any farming business, the first role of a farmer is food production. And, you know, to see now where we are with no incentivization of food production is wrong. You know, we are grubbing out of apple orchards and yet government has a target to plant trees. We've left, you know, much of our fruit and uh, veg rotting because it hasn't been able to be picked over the years. You know, we still are asking for a five year um, seasonal worker scheme and the opportunity to, to deliver some visas for the whole season of, of nine months. And it just feels on every level that, you know, taking food security seriously, having policies that will provide certainty, provide a plan for food production, there's still a lot of work to do. I remember when I was first elected as deputy president, um, I really wanted to see a meaningful food strategy. We did a lot of work to encourage Henry Dimbleby's food strategy that actually Michael Gove kicked off. And of course, that is now sat gathering dust because, you know, it, it didn't tick the boxes that government wanted it to do. So here we are 10 years on without that meaningful food strategy. And, you know, so much opportunity with linking people to a healthy, balanced diet. We provide the, the raw ingredients for, you know, not only the people in this country, we can grow so much more. You know, the big ambition to have a horticultural revolution whereby you know, we are growing much more of our fruit and vegetables. And I, 
I do the comparisons in my speech next week of, you know, the difference with solar right now, you know, you are locked in effectively for a minimum of 20 years on a payment rate of anywhere between 800 and 1100 pounds per hectare. You know, what, what is not to like? You know what you're getting involved in, you know how long you'll be involved and you know what the returns will be. You know, the fact that we treat uh, fruit and vegetables with such disregard you know imagine if we could have index linked payments for fill veg it, and, and to have no focus no payments for food production you know we are and I've said it before the only country in the G20 that is carrying out this experiment effectively of putting all that financial investment into delivering on the environmental legislated targets that doesn't mean they're not really important but but we've got to do both, not not one pitched against the other. And this is nothing new for you. I've, I've been saying this probably pretty much every week. But I do think the run up to this election is a, is a real litmus test of all parties as to what their plan will be for the future of food production in this country. And, and my goodness, is it demanding answers. Um, so... I'm not going to sum it up uh, on here. I, I just want to thank you uh, from the bottom of my heart for all your support, your advice in many cases. I've had a, a lot of emails that have come through over the years um, and your friendship. You know, when I've gone around the countries, you've been so kind uh, to me. Um, I've been given some wonderful gifts, some wonderful cards and, and messages. And yeah, it's it's been the privilege of my lifetime to do it, to lead the fight on your behalf. And it's incredibly difficult to say goodbye. And next week, you know, is, is gonna feel very emotional. I um I have worked on my speech for a long time, writing it, rewriting it, trying to get everything in there. Um we've got more press coming to this conference than we've ever had before. And it'll be very, very interesting to see what, what politicians have to say. And, you know, Steve Barclay, as Secretary of State, uh, one of my challenges to the department will be, you know, it, it is unacceptable for us that he has just called the Secretary of State for the environment. It doesn't do justice to the acronym. We clearly really need to bring the department for together. At the very least, you know, he should be the Secretary of State for food and environment. Um, so look, let's hope we can continue to hold government to account, but to energize them on the opportunities, because my goodness, the opportunities are enormous. And as we go down the, the, the cliff effectively of tapered payments in BPS, you know, one of my big challenges to them throughout has been how are we going to manage our risk and volatility? You know, we've got a lot of area of land still flooded. We need to be able to pay farmers to store this water where it's suitable to store it. They can't just store it for nothing. They can't protect houses and businesses for nothing. They have to be paid for it. We have to be able to move water, to store water, to have planning permission that will allow on-farm reservoirs to be built. And this, of course, is why the big push is setting a target for food production and underpinning it with that statutory annual reporting, because otherwise, it just gets left out of local plans and it becomes the poor relation and that can't happen. So look, once again, thank you. I say it every single week. I'm, I'm saying it for the last time, but really, really look after yourselves. I've tried to raise the profile of mental health and wellbeing, the brilliant charities that there are out there. Um, I know we'll be raising money for FCN, for RABI and for Addington, but there are many, many others too who are raising the profile of mental health and, and well-being. Um, so just look after yourselves and I hope I will run into you uh, at many of the shows in, in future and I will be cheering you all on from my farm in Wiltshire. Anyway, with that, I will say goodbye and huge, huge thanks for everything. Uh, that you've given me.